What is up, you guys? Most of social media seems very strange to me these days, but I wanted to do a video about polyunsaturated fats. A lot of people ask me this. I'm spending a lot of my time these days answering emails from you guys at Heart and Soil. Check us out, heartandsoilsupplements.com if you need desiccated organs. But I'm answering a lot of emails there at Dr. Paul at heartandsoilsupplements.com with questions. And a lot of people ask me, Paul, can you show me some studies that show how bad polyunsaturated fats are? So here you go. I'm going to post this on my podcast as well, but there's a video component that will be on Instagram and on YouTube, and I will screen share a lot of these studies. I imagine the way that social media is going, I'm going to have to figure out how to do Instagram reels or just do TikTok and interpretive dances to do science, but I'm just going to try and do this one the old fashioned way and share some literature that I think really clearly illustrates in humans how bad linoleic acid is, how bad excess omega-6 polyunsaturated fat from vegetable oils are. If you've seen my previous videos, I've talked about this a lot. I've done multiple podcasts on this with Tommy Wood and others. I did another short podcast about this in the past. There's other Instagram IGTV videos. Go back and listen to those if you have questions. I've got a podcast coming very soon with Brad Marshall in which we talk about this. And I've been in contact with Peter from Hyperlipid, a lot of whose work I really appreciate. And he is gonna get on the podcast soon too, okay? First study, this one is really, really cool and really well done. So this is, the title is here. This is basically a six month child, ch trial, not child, a six month trial done in the People's Republic of China. And in the abstract, it's very fascinating. What they say is that it has been suggested that the increase in carbohydrate at the expense of fat has contributed to the obesity epidemic in North America and some European countries. However, obesity rates in China have increased rapidly in parallel with the transition from the traditional low fat, high carbohydrate diet, the traditional Asian diet of mostly white rice, to a diet relatively high in fat and reduced carbohydrate. Now, editorializing. What kind of fat do you think they're eating in China? They're eating soybean oil. And I'll show you that in this study. And that will explain why they're getting fatter in China. So how did they do this study? It's a six month, six month, two center, three arm, randomized parallel group controlled feeding trial conducted at the People's Liberation Army General Hospital in Northern China. <laughs> All right, they were young adults, aged 18 to 35 years, BMI less than 28. They're metabolically healthy. There are three diets that are isocaloric, you guys, isocaloric diet. Every diet is controlled. All of the food was provided for these people in the study. Every single bit of food over six months was provided for people in the study. This is unheard of. All the diets are isocaloric. They're all exactly the same amount of calories. You can't bring the calories in, calories out argument here. All the arguments are moot. They're all isocaloric. They're lower fat, higher carbohydrate diet, moderate fat, moderate carbohydrate diet, and a higher fat, lower carbohydrate diet. There were a total of 307 participants in the study. Before I show you what happened, I'm gonna show you how they constructed it. You can see in this table, the energy in the diets was exactly the same across all three diets, low fat, medium fat, high fat. And there was males and females had different amounts. So what they did was they did dietary recall for males and females, and they estimated how many calories these people were gonna need in a day to maintain their body weight. Carbohydrates across all three studies varied. 66%, 55%, and 46% respectively, and fat, 20%, 30%, and 40% respectively. Protein, the same in every study. They did not change protein. Dietary fiber, exactly the same. So what you have here is a total of 307 young BMI that is low and healthy, BMI of less than 28, men and women in China for six months eating isocaloric diets, provided for them in their entirety, the only thing that was changed were the relative ratios of carbohydrates and polyunsaturated fat. You see up here in the procedures, by replacing a proportion of the energy derived from carbohydrates, white rice and wheat flour, the most consumed carbohydrate sources in China, contributing 70 and 17 total percent of the total carbohydrate supply respectively, with fats from soybean oil, the most consumed edible oil in China, rich in unsaturated fatty acids, which we all know are super healthy, right? Don't you laugh in the back. No sniggering in the back. This is, this is serious stuff, you guys. Lives are on the line here. We all know that vegetable oils are super healthy, right? Obviously, I'm joking. But that's what they did in the study. 
The only things they changed among these three groups over six months were lower carbs, more soybean oil. Okay, what do you think happened? Because the dietary recalls appeared to underestimate the amount of calories they needed, all the groups lost weight. But check this out. This is very clear. Body weight change and waist circumference. What do you think this line up here is? This is the high fat, high soybean oil line. What does it show? It shows that the people who ate the most soybean oil lost the least amount of weight. Again, everybody lost weight because their dietary recall was inadequate. They didn't give them enough calories to maintain their weight. What you can see though, is that the soybean oil, the more soybean oil they had, the less weight they lost. The less soybean oil they had, the more weight they lost. But wait a minute, more soybean oil means more polyunsaturated fats, more linoleic acid. Does this sound like anything we've heard recently? This is exactly what I've been talking about, you guys. The more linoleic acid in our diet, the fatter we get. This is an evolutionary signal that winter is coming. It allows your fat cells to expand. I'm building on the work of Peter at Hyperlipid here. I'll credit to him again on the podcast. But look at this. This is super fascinating. The soybean oil group that had the most soybean oil, was the, they lost the least amount of weight. And then moderate is in the middle. The ones that had the most carbs lost the most amount of weight. But wait, I thought carbs made us fat. No, this is what I'm saying. Carbohydrates don't make you fat, you guys. Linoleic acid makes you fat. This is what we're missing. Polyunsaturated fats are the problem, not carbohydrates. And this isn't even good carbohydrates, quote unquote, whatever that is. This is white rice and processed wheat. They lost way more weight over six months. Totally significant findings here. These are all statistically significant. Look at these p-values, less than 0.001 than the higher fat soybean oil group. So what do we have in this study? We have a really striking finding of 307 people, six months, isocaloric diets, men and women, randomized, controlled, every single bit of their food provided. The only variables were carbohydrates and polyunsaturated fats. The more linoleic acid, the more fat they held on to. Remember, all the diets were not enough calories for the people. So they all lost weight. Who lost the most weight? The people who had more carbs and less, saturated, less of the linoleic acid. The, who lost the least weight? The people who had less carbs and more soybean oil. Does this sound familiar? Yes. I wish they'd done an arm of this study in which they had saturated fat in there. And I'm sure that would have been very good. And that would have been just as good as the higher carb option. If they'd done an arm that had higher fat with saturated fat, like suet, that is high in stearic acid, I bet you would have seen equivalent weight loss to the higher carb group. But the study shows us two things very clearly. I dare any of the trolls to debate me on this one. Bring it. Higher PUFA equals more fat. Carbs don't make you fat. Not if you're metabolically healthy, you guys. Refer to the previous video if you have questions about this. In the setting of metabolic dysfunction, carbohydrates are hard for people. We should eliminate them. If you are metabolically broken, if you are metabolically healthy, carbohydrates won't make you fat. I'm not saying everyone should eat rice and wheat. Those are gonna cause tons of problems, but don't forget about the linoleic acid. The soybean oil is the real problem here. This study is incredible. It may never be repeated, and it's one of the only ones of its kind, but it is really hard to ignore. How can anyone say that polyunsaturated fat is good for us when they see the study? This is not something we want. This is an evolutionary signal for humans to get fat. The second study I wanna share with you guys is much more well-known. It's basically famous, and it should be. Oftentimes, people will say to me in these emails at Hardened Soil, are you gonna debate so-and-so about polyunsaturated fats? And I think, sure, I'll do it, I'm super busy doing other stuff, but I'll do it soon. But people that want to debate on, sat on polyunsaturated fats will levy all sorts of epidemiology and they will ignore the Minnesota coronary experiment and the Sydney diet heart, which I'm going to show you right now. These are interventional controlled trials done in the 1960s and 70s, which clearly show that the inclusion of more polyunsaturated fat leads to adverse outcomes. Why would we even consider epidemiology when there are interventional trials done with polyunsaturated fat that show worsening of all-cause mortality, worsening of cardiac events, it is just crystal freaking clear, you guys. This is not even a question. This is the Sydney Diet Heart Study. If you haven't read this, this is a gem. The history here, as I've said on my podcast multiple times, is that the original trial was done from 1966 to 1973. The data wasn't published until very recently 
In fact, it was published in 2013 by Chris Ramsden. This is similar to the Minnesota coronary study of which Ansel Keys was one of the investigators. When Chris Ramsden went down into the basement of the original investigators and found this microfiche, he found these like old school films. This is James Bond stuff. He asked, why didn't you publish this? Because the results weren't what we were expecting. This is clear evidence that polyunsaturated fats are harmful to humans. It wasn't published because they didn't like the results because there were people like Ansel Keys who had bias, okay? Now, published in 2013, this is an interventional study. 458 men aged 30 to 59 with a recent coronary event. This is a secondary prevention study, which means people have already had, all right? People have already had a heart attack. They've already had a coronary event. So what do they do? They replace dietary saturated fat from animal fats or common margarines and shortenings, which are not a good thing. These are gonna be trans fats with omega-6 linoleic acid from safflower oil and safflower oil polyunsaturated margarine. Controls received no specific dietary instruction or study foods. The interventional group got a high omega-6 linoleic acid safflower oil margarine. Great, right? Everybody knows vegetable oils are good for us. This is fantastic. This is what our cardiologists have been telling us for 60 years, okay? They looked at all cause mortality, cardiovascular mortality, mortality from coronary heart disease, and they found some things that were pretty freaking striking. Before we look at the results, I want to show you guys how they did this, okay? They increased omega-6 linoleic acid from safflower in place of saturated fats for coronary disease. One of the things that makes this even perhaps less impressive was that many people who had coronary events in the control group probably also switched over to some linoleic acid containing margarine and that margarine in the control group also had some trans fats in it. So I think this, this difference between these two groups is not as pronounced as it could have been if they completely eliminated omega-6 from the control group relative to the interventional group, which had more omega-6 and taken out the trans fats from the control group. Nevertheless, the results are still striking. To achieve the targets, they were provided with liquid safflower oil and safflower oil polyunsaturated margarine, the miracle brand from Merrickville Margarine. Oh, of course, it's a miracle. This is definitely a miracle. We'll see what kind of miracle this is here, all right? Now, what do they find? Compared with the control group, which did not have increased omega-6 linoleic acid, the intervention group had an increased risk of all-cause mortality. The p-value is 0.051, essentially totally statistically significant. 7.6% versus 18.8% hazard ratio, a 1.26 hazard ratio, okay? They had an increased cardiovascular mortality and an increased mortality from coronary heart disease. When you see the graphs, you'll be astounded at this. This is super striking. What's crazy here is they also show us in this data what happened to their lipids. So at the end of the paper, you can find all this stuff. There's a great graphic on the amount of linoleic acid in specific cooking oils. I've spoken about this before. You can see safflower, sunflower, cottonseed, corn, soybean, canola, olive, butter, and coconut. Remember that the fat of ruminants is about 1.6% linoleic acid. Safflower oil used in this study was 74.6% linoleic acid. Corn, soybean, up to 53%. Remember, soybean was what they used in the previous study in China. You can see the demographics of the groups here. And you can see the amount of polyunsaturated fats in their diet. Now, at baseline, they had the same amount of saturated fat and polyunsaturated fat. The control group had 8.4 grams of polyunsaturated fat in their diet per day, which is still a lot and 13.5 of saturated. Remember that there were some trans fats in here as well because the control group was probably doing some of the margarine, which wasn't very great. The intervention group had 15.4 grams of polyunsaturated fat and 9.3 saturated fat. <clears throat> Protein essentially equivalent between the rest. Carbohydrates essentially equivalent between the rest. No other dietary advice was given. All right, <clears throat> look at the total cholesterol here. At the beginning of the study, the same. At the end of the study, the total cholesterol went down in the intervention group. This is what we know happens. Vegetable oil lowers your total cholesterol and they died more. <laughs> the lipid hypothesis is flawed, you guys. It's flawed. I don't care who says otherwise. It's, there's so much more nuance here. All right, let's keep going. <clears throat> Look at the graphs here. These are very striking. So these are survival graphs. This really tells the whole story. This is cumulative death rate over the course of the Sydney Diet Heart Study 
look at this dark line. This is the intervention group. This is cumulative death. The further up, the more people who are dying. The, the hazard ratio is 1.62. The curves diverge immediately, immediately along this time frame, you guys. There are more people <clears throat> in the intervention group dying more quickly than the control group. Very clear. These are statistically significant differences. This is cardiovascular disease. This is coronary heart disease. Remember, this blue line is excess linoleic acid. The red line is more saturated fat, not even perfect. These are called Kaplan-Meier estimates. These are five-year cumulative death rates after randomization to the intervention or control group. This is striking. Now, this I love, this graphic at the end. It's a meta-analysis of the linoleic acid interventions. And what you can see is that the selective linoleic acid polyunsaturated fat interventions, Minnesota coronary men, Minnesota coronary women, Sydney Diet Heart, the Rose Corn Oil Study, all show a trend, a trend toward, a very clear trend, toward worsening outcomes with polyunsaturated fat. On the flip side, some would argue, hey, there are trials like Oslo Diet Heart or Los Angeles Veterans, which show that PUFA is better. But these are also mixed omega-3, omega-6 PUFA interventions. Now, we know this balance between omega-3 and omega-6 is important. In the pure PUFA interventions, it's very clear all of these favor the control, which don't have more polyunsaturated fat. This is what people who would argue against PUFAs are leaning on, Oslo Diet Heart, LA Veterans, these kind of things. These are not the same intervention. They're changing both N3 and N6. And as I've spoken about previously, there are multiple problems with the way that LA Veterans and Oslo Diet Heart were done in terms of study design. So where do we end up with all this? I've shown you guys two very clear, very well done interventional studies with increased polyunsaturated fats in the first study from China showing that it leads to less weight loss. And again, in that study, everyone was hypocaloric, but the people with more linoleic acid, more soybean oil lost less weight than the people with more carbs and less linoleic acid. You still think linoleic acid is good for you or it's benign? It's making your fat cells grow. It's making your fat cells grow. This is not a good thing. The Sydney Diet Heart Study, published in 2013 after being conducted 50, 40 years earlier, essentially, 40 to 50 years earlier by Chris Ramsden. They didn't publish it because they didn't like the results. What do the results show? That in men who had had a coronary event, if you substitute animal fat into a margarine, which is already kind of crappy, they die more overall and they die more of cardiac events. These are interventional studies. These are not able to be ignored. You cannot cherry pick interventional studies. There is no such thing as bias. These studies stand on their own. No one can challenge these. What's interesting is at the end of the Sydney Diet Heart study paper that I showed you, you can see that the other studies people would levy in favor of PUFAs often change multiple, multiple interventions. They change multiple things, multiple variables, N3 and N6, right? Do not be misled by this, guys. There's so much good evidence that polyunsaturated fat is horrible for humans, that it's making our fat cells grow which leads to badness. That is eventually what leads to metabolic dysfunction. Like I said, I got a podcast with Brad Marshall coming up very soon. I'm excited about the release of Firestarter at Heart and Soil. It's a high stearic acid suet. It's an animal food that is necessary for humans. I really think that the stearic acid is going to do the reverse thing in our fat cells. It's going to help them shrink. Obviously, I am super excited about everything else we're doing with desiccated organs. Get nose to tail nutrition, get organs in your diet, get rid of garbage plant oils. Avoid eating excess corn and soy fed foods. As you will hear in the podcast with Brad Marshall coming up very, very soon, he had a client or somebody he was, that he heard of or spoke to on Twitter who did not lose weight until she cut out chicken and pork. Others in the carnivore community, it's so dogmatic, will poo-poo these results and say, oh no, chicken and pork aren't bad for you. Listen, if you're having trouble getting rid of extra weight, get rid of chicken and pork. Get rid of a lot of plants too. Definitely get rid of vegetable oils. Make sure you're eating nose to tail. Get those nutrients. If you can get them fresh, that's great. If you can't, check us out at hardensoilsupplements.com. Get some desiccated organs. You can email me, Dr. Paul, at hardensoilsupplements.com if you have questions. I hope this is helpful. I'm just trying to drive those freaking nails into the POFA coffin these days and show people there's solid evidence that these are not good for humans, evolutionarily as well as contemporary studies today. So don't be misled. I look forward to some further discussions about this. I hope this has been helpful. It's going to be on Instagram, YouTube, and my podcast. If you're listening to it on my podcast and you want to see the videos, go to Instagram or YouTube to find those, you guys. Stay radical. Love you all.